In a previous video we went through our game plan, so you can check that out if you want to see where this course is going. So first of all, on the left in our hierarchy, we want to right click and go 2D object, sprites, square, and this is going to be our player. So you can name this player. For our player to move around, we're going to need to add some components. So in the inspector, click add component, and first we'll add a rigid body 2D. This gives our player physics, gravity, and mass. Under constraints, I'm going to freeze our Z rotation so our player doesn't spin around when it hits things. Next, I'll add another component, which will be a box collider 2D. If we zoom in on our player, you can see we have this green box around him, which is our collider. This will tell us when our player is touching things and allows it to collide with other objects, like our platforms or enemies. Right click 2D objects sprite square. Drag this down and out. We'll name this platform. And add a box collider 2D. For this tutorial, we're going to be using Unity's input system. So we're going to need to install that using Unity's package manager. So go to Window, Package Manager. Then in this drop down, change it from In Project to Unity, Unity Registry and search for Input System. Then select Input System and click Install. Once this has installed, we do need to restart our editor. So once we've restarted, close our package manager, select your player, click add component, then search player input, and we'll add our player input to our player. We have no actions yet, so click create actions. And we'll call this player controls. Now you can see by default, we've got some actions set up for us. So we've got our movement, which is all we need for now. We'll add our jump later once we get to it. Now all we want to do is under behavior, select invoke unity events since we want to set up our own events in script. You can see this creates this events drop down. So you can drop this down and open up player. You can see we have our move event here. This is what we'll call in our script. So let's add a script. Click add component, new script, and call this player movement. Then double click on this to open it up. In our script, we want some variables. We want a public rigid body 2D called RB, a public float called move speed, which we'll set to a default of 5F, and a float for our horizontal movement. At the top to use our new input system, we'll need to add using unity engine dot input system. So now we can write our input actions. So we'll type public void move and we'll pass in our input action dot callback context. We'll call this context. And we'll set our horizontal movement to be equal to our context dot read value vector two. And we'll grab the X. So that's the movement on the X axis, so our horizontal movement. Now we'll get our player to move. So I'll set our rigid body's velocity to equal a new vector two, and we'll pass in our horizontal movement times our move speed, and our rigid body's current velocity dot Y. So we keep our downward momentum. And that's it for the script. So back in Unity, we'll make sure we drag our rigid body 2D into our player movement script, then open up our player input. Under events and player, we'll add a new event for move. You can drag your player object from your hierarchy into this move event. Then under no function, we'll go down to player movement. And you can see move is at the top here because we have an input action callback context passed into our parameter. So if you select move and then press play, our character moves with our arrow keys. And that's it. We can also up our movement speed since we made this a public variable. You can see it down in our movement script. In the next episode, we'll be looking at tile maps and getting our platform set up and looking cool. See you then.